Hi, I'm Eric with Cali on the Water. Today we're going to compare the differences between electronic flares and traditional pyrotechnic flares. With the advancements in this new technology, electronic flares bring some interesting advantages and safety features versus traditional flares. Let's start with the traditional flares that we're all familiar with, as they've been the go-to method as a distress signal for many years. There are actually two primary types of signal flares, which are called locate signals versus alert signals. One thing that we have to keep in mind is that the curvature of the Earth limits the distance you can see these signals. So altitude of these signals is important for both boaters and rescue operations in order to find you. A locate signal simply means that you are closer to your rescuers, so you'll likely use a handheld flare that can be seen up to three miles away. These flares burn brightly and are typically around 700 candela in brightness. If you were to use an alert signal instead, which is an aerial flare, like this one here, it can be launched into the air and be seen up to 27 miles away. And they can go as high as 500 feet, depending upon which type of aerial flare you use. There are different types. A pocket rocket aerial flare will go up to about 300 feet in elevation and can be seen up to 20 miles away. The next level up is a 25 millimeter aerial flare, which will go up to 375 feet in elevation and be seen up to 23 miles away, so an extra three miles. The next one up is the Sky Blazer 2 aerial flare, and that will go up to 450 feet in elevation and be seen up to 25 miles away. And then this particular model here, this is actually the 12 gauge HP aerial flare, which is what's included in this particular coastal alert signal kit by Orion, who's one of the marine manufacturers of the signal flares that you'll often find at West Marine and places like that. This will actually go up to 500 feet in elevation and be seen up to 27 miles away. This type of flare burns very brightly, up to 16,000 candela, and has a burn time of about seven seconds. It uses this launcher in order to get the elevation that it's needed. So if you're gonna use these, you might as well get this version so you can be seen at the greatest distance away in case you ever need it. This does meet both the daytime and nighttime signal requirements for the Coast Guard. In addition, this kit comes with both a whistle and a signaling mirror so that you can reflect the sun and get someone's attention during the day. It's kind of an old method, but they still have these available. It's also a good idea to have an air horn on a smaller vessel if you don't have an electronic horn system. Welcome to another episode of Cali on the Water, where we focus on all aspects of life around the water and topics of interest for our boating community. We're based in Southern California and can often be seen boating along the West Coast. We cover boating topics, product reviews, special events, and coastal cities that are interesting to visit from a boater and traveler standpoint. Whether you are new to boating or are a seasoned boater, you'll find something of interest and hopefully learn something new. We'll bring you best practices in boating to help sharpen your skill level and protect your investment. We'll also review boating and traveling products so that you can make an informed decision for your next purchase. As fellow boaters, we know that your time is valuable. So we do our best to give a research overview for each episode to make the best use of your time. If there are boating and traveling topics you'd like us to cover, please feel free to email us at callionthewater at gmail.com. We hope you enjoy our channel. Let's go back to our traditional flares that we're talking about here. There's some limitations of these. Uh, first of all, they're flammable, so you have to be careful where you store them. Second, they have a limited burn time. So in this case, with these aerial flares, uh, there's seven seconds per flare. Now, some of the handheld flares and other types that are not aerial will burn up to 60 seconds total burn time. This particular kit comes with six aerial flares. Now, one thing is they have an expiration date of about three and a half years. I think it says right here on this brochure, uh, 42 months. So the one thing there is just the Coast Guard and the Harbor Patrol, they consider flares expired after four years from the date of manufacture. So they're going to give you an extra six months for four years total. 
the issue often becomes how do you dispose of an expired flare? It's still flammable. It contains toxic chemicals and metals. Some marine areas have a collection program or an annual collection event just for this reason. You know, it always seems that when the Coast Guard Auxiliary does your boat inspection to make sure you have all safety devices up to date on board, the flares are just often expired. So let's look at another option, and that's these electronic flares. Electronic flares provide some interesting advantages. First, they have a continuous flare time of up to 60 hours, depending upon the model, which is four times longer than U.S. Coast Guard requirements. They don't expire like a traditional flare, which makes it easier to pass the Coast Guard Auxiliary Inspection. You will need to change the batteries on occasion to maximize the use time in case it's needed. One thing that surprised me about these electronic flares is just how bright they are. When I first turned this one on at the dock, I was kind of looking in that direction. And let's just say next time, uh, I won't be looking in that same direction. I'll be looking away because I couldn't see for the next 10 seconds with white spots everywhere. So when you turn these on, make sure you point them away from you. Let's go ahead and turn this one on. And you can see it flashing right there. This is the white LED, the original one. And again, turn it on, point it away from you. All right, and then you just go the opposite direction to turn it off, perfect. These electronic flares, they meet the US Coast Guard nighttime visual distress signal requirements as they flash a SOS signal. However, it's important to note that this product also comes with a daytime orange distress flag and a whistle in order to pass the daytime visual distress signal requirements for the Coast Guard, as the device by itself will not pass this standard. As you recall, marine flares do pass the daytime requirement. The C-1003 model from Sirius, the distress signal model, is the updated version of this one. It weighs just about a pound with the batteries installed. And this model, the C-1001, was recently replaced with the 1003. This model has one white LED, retails for about $90, and is known as a one-color distress light. The LED power is 75 candles in comparison to what the flares would be in the traditional size. It is visible up to 10 nautical miles during the night. The newer model, the C1003, has an improved level of brightness on the white LED and better flotation uh, for visibility in the water. So they improved the visibility of how it sits in the water so you can see it easier. It contains an omnidirectional light display for both surface rescue and it has a vertical beam um, so it goes up from a visual standpoint for aircraft flying overhead. It complies with the Coast Guard for all recreational marine vessels 16 feet and over for visual distress signal requirements. The Sirius signal models are made in the USA as well as the Orion signal flares, these ones here. So you're supporting US jobs when you're purchasing these. There are other electronic flare brands, but the Sirius Signal brand claims to be the brightest electronic LED flares available. This is the higher end model, which is the C1002. It's actually a two color distress light. It contains 13 LEDs and emits a red, orange, and blue light. This model retails for about $300 and is five times brighter than any approved electronic flare on the market. It also includes an app for your iPhone or Android. This two-color model flashes the SOS signal in red and blue and in infrared. It includes six red-orange LEDs, six cyan, which is blue, LEDs, and one infrared. It does require eight CR123 lithium batteries, which are included in the price and weighs about a pound and a half. The infrared capability allows aerial assets using night vision goggles or FLIR, which is a type of thermal imaging cameras, to be able to see this device. This higher end model does include Bluetooth connectivity to the Sirius Signal app, which will automatically send updates to your emergency contacts when programmed. And it'll let you say if you're okay or if you need help. So it, it's an extra safety feature they've now included. This two-color model will flash SOS signals in colors and infrared for up to eight hours. Because it has the two-color combination, it's easier to see. 
it's probably a good idea to have backup batteries just in case. On the app, you can send out a float plan from your iPhone or Android or your Apple Watch. Let's turn this one on to see what it looks like. There you go. Just point this at the camera. That is bright. So it's the traditional SOS signal. Here goes the red, dit, 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 then da, da, da with the blue, and then dit, dit, dit with the red. Well, that takes me back. You know, back in the day, we had to learn Morse code in order to get our amateur radio license from the FCC. We needed this because before cell phones, we used the two meter band handheld radios to communicate from out in the water in addition to the Marine VHF radio. In fact, there's still some boaters today that still use this system. Let's take a look at some of the features of this newer two color model. Before getting underway, Use the Start Trip feature on the phone app to send out your float plan. After a while, check on the app to update your status and position. Just select the Check Me feature on your watch or phone app and let those that matter to you know where you are and that you're safe. If there's an issue on the boat, you activate the SOS signal in your app, either on your watch or on your phone. Simultaneously, a phone call and text are sent to first responders and your family. Now turn on the electronic flutter SOS signal, which begins to flash and will alert and locate your position and help is sent back to bring you back to shore. Notice the clever way to place the electronic flare in your fishing rod holder in your vessel. It's kind of funny, with that flare flashing in red and blue, it kind of looks like the harbor police or something, but you're certainly going to get noticed. So here's the bottom line. These electronic flares are a welcome addition to our boating community, and it makes sense to have this as part of your must-have essentials on board your vessel from a safety and convenience standpoint so that you get the help when needed. But as a backup, there's still a place for pyrotechnic flares, as they're more likely to be seen immediately, especially during the daytime. So you might as well have both kinds of flares on board. As the saying goes, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure especially on the water where things can go wrong in a hurry. Most emergencies that I've had on the water happen quickly and often when it's the most inconvenient time. So always best to be prepared. Well, that wraps up our product review today on electronic flares. If there are products you would like us to review for the boating community, please feel free to let us know at caliontheWater at gmail.com. Our goal is to review new, unique, or important products that can improve our safety and life on the water. And we welcome suggestions from our viewers. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and be sure to hit the notifications button to be informed on future reviews and episodes. We appreciate your time today and thanks for watching.